Hello. Uh, this is my first uh, part talking about neonatal chest X-ray, and it will be dedicated to the basics uh, of reading chest X-ray. Uh, it's helpful to any uh, medical staff who's planning, who's starting reading chest X-rays, and uh, it will include the talk about indications for doing chest X-rays, uh, important anatomical landmarks, a systematic approach composed of six steps in uh, reading the chest X-rays, and uh, during these uh, talks I will mention the issues related to units in particular, and at the end I will mention a talk about important tubes and lines in neonatal X-rays. X-rays are done to confirm or exclude a suspected diagnosis, to check for the position of the various uh, tubes and catheters used in intensive care, to monitor pulmonary inflation, and to check for the development of any complications. Important anatomical landmarks that you should know include the trachea, then the carina, which is at the level of T5, then the uh, Aortic, aortic arch and descending aorta, the left border of the heart, composed mainly of the left hemi, uh, sorry, of the left ventricle, then both right and left hemidiaphragm, and then the right border, composed mainly of the right atrium and the superior vena cava. Other important landmarks include the clavicles, then the posterior ribs, the anterior ribs, the right and left costophrenic angles, the right and left uh, uh, hyda, and then the abysses of the lung. The left border is composed of uh, the aortic arch, then the pulmonary artery, and then the atrial appendages, then the left ventricle, and the left contour of the diaphragm. It's important to keep in mind that this anatomical, these anatomical landmarks are not present in neonatal X-rays, but you should be familiar with them if you are reading adult or older ch children X-rays. While the right border of the heart is composed of the right atrium, the ascending aorta, the superior vena cava, and you may see the brachiocephalic trunk. For units in particular, it's important to recognize normal appearances of the thymus, for example, the sail sign, as you see here, or the wavy thymus here. While uh, most of the time we can see the thymus, the absence of the thymus shadow in a second unit is more likely to be related to involution with thymus because of stress rather than the thymic aplasia associated with thy George syndrome. An important landmark to look for in neonatal X-ray is the presence of the uh, head of humerus ossification, which indicates that this newborn baby is a term baby. The systematic approach includes six steps, starting from giving the type of radiograph and projection, the patient's name, then the date and x-ray was taken. For example, this is a PHS radiograph of baby X taken on the 1st of January 2020. Then briefly assess the film quality, which has four components, as we are going to mention later. Then we run the ABCDE of the chest X-ray and we give at the end a short summary. Film quality is judged, as we said, by four components. Inspiration, expansion, aeration, then the exposure or penetration, then rotation and artifacts. <coughs> aeration or expansion or inspiratory films, actually it's difficult to get inspiratory film in, in units. The problem of expiratory films is that it can give false cardiomegaly and or false collapse or consolidation from dense vessels. Usually a good inspiratory film lies at the level of the 8th rib posteriorly and 6th rib anteriorly. 
while signs of hyperexpansion includes presence of more than six ribs or even uh, up to seven ribs anteriorly or eight ribs uh, posteriorly or nine ribs it's still uh, considered acceptable flattening of the diaphragm increased lucency of lung fields and air under the heart or herniation of the lung to opposite side then ribs more horizontal while counting ribs is important to judge the expansion it may be inaccurate in neonates because neonates have a compliant chest so the expansion may be in the anterior posterior diameter rather, rather than the superior inferior diameter dimension sorry here you can see the effect of expiratory film when the film is expiratory the diaphragm will look like the gull wings these gull wings will affect the size of the lungs and the shadow of the heart as you can see it gives false impression of cardio -nickel. this is an example of acceptable a little bit hyper but accepted normal inspiratory film if you count the posterior ribs one two three four five six seven eight up to nine and then anteriorly this is one rib two rib three four five six and seven ribs anterior <coughs> while in the expiratory film there is what looks like a cardiomegaly no clear borders of the diaphragm and maybe four or five ribs posterior on We'll come to next part, which is exposure or penetration. How much X-rays have penetrated the tissues? If the so much, or if the X-ray is overexposed, it will lead to darker soft tissue, easily visible retrocardiac vertebrae and lung bones that appear do to disappear. While this was a major problem in conventional films, it is much less a problem in computer X-rays, which by uh, manipulating the uh, X-ray using the uh, mouse, the brightness can be changed and the exposure can be affected or improved. This is an example of good penetration. And here you can see over penetrated X-ray when lucency has increased. The vertebrae appear very clear at the retrocardiac shadow and you see the bone appears to disappear. While this is an example of under penetration, again if you are using a computer viewer, you can affect the penetration and improve the quality. Rotation has a major impact and if you want to judge the rotation we usually have two ways either to measure the distance of the anterior ends of the ribs from the midline of the spine which should be equal uh, on either sides if they are unequal means it is rotated uh, sorry uh, or you judge at the medial end of the clavicles which uh, from the midline actually the first criterion or the first way is more important as the uh, lower chest tends to be rotated more commonly than the upper chest uh, usually <clears throat> the side to which the chest is rotated appears more hyperlucent than the other and hence should be interpreted with caution this diagram shows the effect of rotation uh, and centralization uh, using the medial end of the clavicles from the spinous processes here if you can see a should be equal to b which is the distance between the spinous processes and medial end of the clavicles while if the baby or the patient has left anterior oblique position the right distance is more than the left and the opposite in right anterior oblique so what's the problem of rotated films? It can lead to cardiomegaly, it can lead to mediastinal shift, and it can increase the translucency of the lungs. Here, an example of well-centralized X-ray. We use the lower part of the ribs 
to judge the uh, uh, rotation of or centralization of the x-ray what we do is we draw a line in the midline then a line from the midline to the inner border of the ribs on the left side again on the right side and then we compare the two lines if they are equal it means that the x-ray is centralized the last thing in quality judgment is the artifact and one of the most common artifacts in units is the skin fold many times we have been reviewing the x-rays for the suspicion of pneumothorax and it turned out to be a just a skin fold like in this x-ray you can make sure that it's a skin fold when you can see the lung tissue lateral to the fold as you can see here now the ABCD system, ABCDE system of reading X-ray is used to remember what elements to look for. For the A, it stands for airway, and here we look for the trachea, <coughs> right and left main bronchi, uh, bronchi and the intermediate bronchus. Then B for breathing, so we look at the lungs, make sure that they are symmetrical and uniformly expanded and look around the edges of each lung. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, C stands for circulation. So we look at the cardiac size, we look at the great vessels, the pulmonary vessels and aorta, and we look at the mediastinum and hyla. D for disability, so we look for fractures, especially of the ribs or shoulder girdle. E for everything else like air under the diaphragm, the edges for surgical emphysema and foreign bodies and other unnatural presences now before finishing this system uh, uh, after finishing this system and before judging the quality the, uh, on the x-ray it's important in you need to look for tubes and lines endotracheal tube should end two centimeter above the carina at the inferior border of the clavicle for chest tubes, if they were inserted for pneumothorax, it should be anterior and apical, while for pleural effusion, it should be inferior and posterior. So, a lateral x ray may be needed to confirm the position. Pick or peripherally inserted central catheters, if they are inserted from the upper limb, they should be in the superior vena cava, while if they are inserted in the lower limb, they should lie in the inferior vena cava within one centimeter from the diaphragm. Umbilical arterial catheters, they initially go downward, they have a downward course, then from the umbilical insertion into the internal iliac artery. The tip of the umbilical arterial catheter should lie either in the upper position from T6 to T9, where it should be above the celiac trunk, or in the lower position from L3 to L5 below the renal artery, while the umbilical venous catheters should extend immediately superior from the umbilicus, the tip should be positioned within one centimeter of the diaphragm. These are the major important aspects of reading X-rays in general. After completion of these steps, you should be able to give a summary of your findings. These are my references and hopefully we will see you in the second part of this presentation which will talk about major uh, presentations or diseases in the neonatal period. Thank you.